Hey guys, welcome back to my flooded basement solutions series here. This is the second part of my flood remediation video. If you have seen the first one, you already know that my basement was flooded just recently, despite of my working French drain and sump pump due to the heavy rain in the area. I've already done the damage remediation and mold prevention after flood in the first part. If you haven't seen that yet, you can find the link right above here or at the end of this video. And today I will show you how I turned the disaster zone back into this nice space and made it flood damage resistant. Now I'm not afraid of the next big storm. My basement will hold up to 6 to 7 inches of flood water without getting any serious damage. Let me show you what I did to make this place flood friendly. Totally DIY by myself keeping tons of money in the pocket. First, I started out with closing up the big holes I opened up last week under my window wells where I had too much water coming in. But before I patch it up with a piece of drywall, I put these rigid styrofoam insulations behind the existing fiber insulations. These are water resistant. There are different thicknesses. Mine is one inch thick by four feet by eight feet. And I only used one of this and it covered my entire basement. They will provide me some insulation in the bottom of the walls where I remove the wet fiber insulations about 7 inches from the floor. I also add a second layer of it where I could to increase its R value. If these get wet, they will not be damaged and they are mold resistant. This material was very easy to handle, easy to cut, R value is only 3.85 but if you double them and leave some gap in between, you can increase its R value a lot. You can find all the materials I used in this project in the description below. And I just want to quickly remind you to kindly hit the like button for this video. Thank you so much for the support. After the insulation, I put a piece of drywall over the opening, spackled two coats and skim coated and sanded. it. I'm going to put, post another video of that process showing step by step and the link will be right up here when I do but to keep this video short I'll fast forward that process. I use the regular sheet rock but if you are replacing a big area or all the lower parts of your walls you should definitely use green board. They are about five dollars more expensive per board but they are mold resistant. I think regular sheet rock do not belong to basements. They get moldy very easily. In my case I'm trying something different. I'm not putting back the sheet rock I will leave it open and cover it with PVC base molding. I found the same style molding in PVC but little taller so it covers the cut I made. Of course there were some hiccups along the way. My 10 inch miter saw couldn't cut 8 inch molding so I had to run and buy myself a 12 inch miter saw which was actually a great update. I really like the new one. I might have a separate video unboxing it and basic usage instructions so we'll see. I made tons of cuts. I used 15 pieces of 1 by 8 by 8 feet long baseboard moldings. These were actually not baseboards. They were exterior trim fascia moldings and about $3.50 per foot. Only 50 cents more than its wood equivalent but totally worth to spend little extra. They are sized just like lumbers. They have nominal and actual sizes. PVC is waterproof. My basement will stand up to 6 to 7 inches of flood water without getting any serious damage. So I'm not really trying to avoid flood here. I'm just reducing the damage that would have been caused otherwise. As long as the water level stays less than 7 inches, at least this is my plan and intention. I love to hear your thoughts about this. Please feel free to leave a comment. This is my solution to a small scale flooding, but you may have something to add or criticize it. I'm open to all. As long as this video helps someone out there who goes through the same disaster, I'll be happy. On another note, just wanted to mention, even though flooding was a bad, bad news, I reached 1000 subscribers last week, which uplifted my mood and brightened up my life. Thank you for finding values and subscribing to my channel. Can't describe my appreciation enough. Here is how I measure my moldings to be cut. First, I measure them and draw a profile which way the 45 degree angle has to face depending on if it's an inside or outside corner. I try to cut from the back side of the moldings to not to chip the front. 
This is a double bevel of miter saw. It tilts to the both sides, makes the cutting so much easier. And you adjust the angle by loosening up this handle in the back and move the blade to the angle you desire. Once I cut several, I set down where they belong. Some long walls will have seams because I couldn't get anything longer than 8 foot to fit in my car. I did my best to locate the seams behind furniture. And for the full length 8 foot pieces, I used a couple of screws in addition to brad nails just in case because this material is a little bit heavy. And it is scarce. I had to make a several trips to three different stores to collect 15 of them. When I was installing, I put tile spacers underneath to create a little gap for water to be able to flow instead of get trapped and rise up in the walls. I installed them with 18 gauge 2 inches long brad nails. I sometimes use stud finder to find the studs if I can't see them or if I do I mark them with my pencil. This was my first time doing moldings. I'm a handy person but never done moldings before. Once you get the system down it's not that hard but I have to be honest. In terms of the physical work I had to go through this last 2-3 weeks had been the hardest project I had ever had to tackle. I think the worst part was being on my knees all the time. In the bathroom I tried something different. I glued this corner the night before just to get a better finish which definitely did work but, um, but it does take more time and effort. This is another area. Of course, I had lots of caulking to do. Walls are not straight and I am not perfect. I want to mention about my flooring very quickly here. I have luxury vinyl planks LVP on self-leveling subfloor, cement subfloor. I removed these to check to see if there was any damage. It was absolutely fine. There were no molds. Unless it's necessary, don't remove these because it's very hard to put them back again. Finally, my studio was back to normal and flood friendly. Most of my furniture have metal legs already, so I was able to save them. And the wooden ones, we were able to put them to a higher ground during the flood. Except the TV stand, which was a MDF. This is the new TV stand with metal legs got it from amazon with a great deal by the way so i keep no carpets or rugs i think i can have a good night's sleep without worrying about the next flood thank you for visiting and i will see you in the next video bye